Do you guys do any sorts of video editing or photo editing on your computer and you like true color accuracy? We're going to take care of that today with the Color Monkey. Bam! So we got Chris AK Homebrewed Hero here with us today and uh, he's the pro when it comes to to photo editing, color accuracy, different kind of panel types and screens and how important that is to color correction. So uh, let's, let's hear from him what All we right. gotta do. Alright, so we've got our color monkey here and we've got several different displays behind us and I'm pretty sure they're all using TN panels. Now, for those of you who don't know, two types of panels out there that are predominantly taking up the market. Your IPS panels, which are in-pane switching, where the pixels essentially can close and display a better black tone. Um, but the problem with IPS is you have ghosting around the edges of the frame, and a lot of people hate that. Uh, they call it the IPS glow. Then you have your TNs. TN panels are cheaper, they're faster, but their color accuracy isn't as good. So we're gonna see how close we can get these things to look like a printed photo for the best color accuracy using this guy right here. We're gonna go through, I'll show you how to do it. So this is the Color Monkey. It's a strange looking little device, got a little bit of spaghetti thing going on as far as the wiring goes. But let's let Homebrewed Hero talk about that. All right, this is pretty much all that's important in the box. There's not much to show you in there, but just so you're aware, it comes with a user's manual and a software installation disk. Now, what we've done for this is we pulled the latest software from the site so we know we're on the most current version of the Color Monkey software that we can get. Now, the way this works has a weight that you can move up and down the cable to hang it on your panel. Um, it operates in two modes. One is with the cover open, to mount to the panel to get the color profile built. And the second one would be plugged in 24 seven running USB with the diffuse on. Now what this will give you is it will adjust your screen's color profile based on your ambient light in the room. So when you do color intensive work where you're going to be printing and you need to proof that print to your screen, you would obviously want to run this USB 24 seven on your desk. But for what we're gonna be doing today, we are just going to calibrate the displays to give you a realistic color correction accuracy of about 80%. The important thing to remember here is to be realistic with your expectations. If your panel physically can't cover 99% RGB, this won't help. I mean, it'll get you close, but it's not going to get you to 99 RGB or 98 Adobe RGB. This is just going to get the most out of your panel that you can get. All right, we're going to go ahead and install the software here. We've pre-downloaded it. Go ahead and select your language. You can read this if you'd like. Your user license agreement, we're not going to. This tells you what you're installing, what's changed. It's kind of nice that they do that for every version so you know your change logs. Just gonna go ahead and whip through this here real fast. All right, now we have to set up the services, which is part of the package, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Now this right here is just saying, you know, would you like to install this because, uh, you know, if you're not sure who this is from, you may not want to do that. We know we're installing all of this for the x uh, Color Monkey, so we're just going to go ahead and hit install for it. If it's anything that you don't know that came up and you're not installing it, you probably shouldn't click yes allow. All right, and then what we have to do for this software is we have to restart the computer. So we're going to do that and we'll be right back. All right, and now we are back after the restart. So we can go ahead and uh, get rid of the install package. And the Color Monkey display looks just like the box. It's a little black and uh, yellow icon here. We're going to go ahead and open this. All right, and you are given two options. Now the Color Monkey can do a projector by placing it on a tripod and pointing it at your projector screen, but we're not going to do that. We're going to actually just do the display. And we're going to start by doing the Samsung display. Now we're going to do both for this video, but we're just going to do it on this first one because it's primary. And we're going to go through the actual detailed setup here because there are a few things that you want to keep in mind when you're trying to match two screens. <clears throat> Here are your different options. You can set it up for uh, different type of video color profiles for standard or for easy mode or advanced. What we're going to do is we're going to do advanced photo and we are going to leave our white point to D65. You can change this but D65 is where I prefer to have it. And then for the brightness on these screens because uh, where we're doing this at it actually is a fairly well lit room. We're going to put it to 130 uh, output so we're going to change our brightness to get this all to match. So here we go. Um, for this, we don't want this to optimize for lighting conditions. That was what I was talking about earlier, where you can leave the Color Monkey plugged in on your desk all the time with the diffuser on it. Um, we're not going to use that. So we're just going to go ahead and uncheck that box. 
Flare correction, again, we're not going to use it because neither of these panels have a nasty glare coming off of it. Where you would ideally want to use this option is if you have a laptop that has a glossy screen. Uh, and that'll help give you the most accurate color or that'll help get you the most accurate color calibration possible. All right, real straightforward. They walk you through it. First and foremost, it'll tell you, hey, the diffuser's on. Dummy, fix that. Pull it off, flip it, and then place it right there on the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And what we wanna do is we wanna adjust the weight so that this hangs completely flat on here without any uh, light seeping in from the sides. This is kind of always the, the first challenge with these because the cable likes to tangle and do its own thing. And it doesn't have to be dead center, but it has to be flat. So now that we've gotten that set, we're gonna go ahead and go through it and you get to see what this thing does. If you're epileptic, uh, it's not super fast, but you might not wanna watch this part. And it'll give you a warning. This is a warning regardless of whether or not your thing is flat. So if you think, oh no, it's not flat, I need to fiddle with it. This is just something that comes up every single time unless you tell it, don't show me this again. So here we go. Hopefully OBS doesn't screw with it. Okay, cool. So right now it's measuring the, the contrast output. In a second, it's going to have me adjust the brightness. Since I told it the brightness we want this panel to have, it's going to force me to adjust it. So you'll notice on the left-hand side of the screen, it's now given us a brightness meter. In a second, it'll actually go to like a white or grayish screen, and we can adjust the uh, output from there. So you notice I told it to get a target white luminance of 130. Well, we came in at 140. So what we're going to want to do is adjust that. We want to get that down, and it takes a second for it to update. So don't go too crazy with your, your screen's actual brightness adjustment. Just do small little increments. And just kind of, you know, wait to see where we're at. And sometimes you won't get it exactly to where you want it to go. So that's something to keep in mind. So we're at 131. That's good enough for me. It's close enough. It's within the uh, margin of error. So now we're going to go ahead and hit next and let it do its thing. We'll move this get this out of the way it's no longer needed for what we're going to be doing um, you can name the profile which I suggest doing because uh, you'll notice it's this really long name and we're going to be doing two screens so what we're going to do is we're going to name this uh, Samsung main that way we know for sure that it is the main screen and then we'll name the second one according um, you can put dates in here but color monkey will remind you every 30 days to do a calibration for the most accurate color you can get so we're going to save it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it not to remind us because since this is not Wayne's, it's mine, he's going to have to bug me all the time to do it. So as long as he remembers to do it like every six months, that should not be a problem. Okay, so now we can do a before and after. So this is where you'll notice subtle differences, especially in the blue tone. So the before, you'll notice everything in here is just kind of really 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 cool and you lose detail um, in the in the shadows and in the bright whites you've lost it so after you notice that it helps out with that it helps out with the color of green which is always a little bit of a challenge um, you can also you know show the different colors in here especially in black and whites the black and whites are actually a black tone they are no longer blue so if you print this out and you looked at this side by side with a print picture you would notice a night and day difference same thing goes for this so it's, it's a subtle difference, but when you do this long enough, it makes a huge, huge difference on your eye strain and your, the quality of your work. Everything's going to be consistent. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit finish, and then we're gonna do the second screen. Now we're going to do the second screen. So you'll notice that Color Monkey knows that we've already done the primary screen. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set the secondary display and tell it to match it to the profile that we just made. For, for the primary screen. So it's going to match the secondary screen to the primary. Okay, and you'll notice that it just jumps right in and wants me to hang it on there. So we're gonna go ahead and hang it on there and, and get that color going. Okay, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just eyeball the brightness as close as I can between the color calibrated screen and the non-calibrated screen. And the reason is um, Color Monkey, when you're on duplicate settings, it's not going to mirror uh, the brightness level is exact, so we're just going to get that as close as we possibly can. All 
All right, so we've just calibrated the display here on the laptop. Now, one thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to have to tell color management displays to load to because this laptop an integrated Intel display adapter that it uses when on battery and then switches over to the dedicated, the discrete uh, GTX 660 from NVIDIA. So when it does that, it loses its color calibration. So I'm going to show you how to fix that really quickly so this doesn't happen to you. What you're going to want to do is go to Advanced under Color Management and you'll see right here it has your device profiles. Okay, all of this. What we're going to go ahead and do <clears throat> is we're going to go ahead and select our Asus which we just made. So we're going to use Asus Main because that's the color profile. Okay, and then we're going to just leave that here because we're going to come back to it. Hit Change System Defaults and now add that Asus display here as our uh, virtual model device profile. So we're going to go ahead and hit Browse. And where is it hidden? Oh, come on. Sometimes you get lucky and it's a drop down. I don't think we're going to get lucky. Please, 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 please. Ah, ha ah, ha, yes, yes. Okay, so instead of what I just said, going up here to this, this is looking for a WCS profile, which I don't know why I spaced. These are all ICC profiles. Scroll down till you find the one that you just made and whatever you named it. So this one we named it Asus Main. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now you'll notice this is our default. What you're wanna, gonna wanna do to verify that is hit set a system default, hit close, hit close again, and now you're done. So now when we play a game, everything's going to be fine. We're not going to lose our color settings. So that does it for the color calibration. All of Wayne's equipment, his laptop, his primary monitor, his secondary monitor, everything is all calibrated. It's going to look as good as it can for what they are. You're going to get the most out of your monitors, given whatever technology that their panel are. And uh, yeah, couldn't have done this without the help of Chris, aka Homebrewed Hero, and his color monkey. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me, guys. Go ahead and uh, like my channel. There'll be a link somewhere down there. Go ahead and like it, but uh, it's always good to work with these guys. So back to Chris. And don't forget to subscribe to his channel either, not just like You don't need to do that. You can just like my channel. <laughs> but feel free to give this video a like if you liked it. Uh, leave a comment if you want to talk about it. If you have any questions, we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. And uh, subscribe for more. There's always more coming, so I'll see you guys. No finger guns? No finger guns. Damn it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>